In everyone's life, there are moments when circumstances may not unfold in their favor, especially when encountering wild animals that consider themselves the masters of the territory. Typically, such situations unfortunately end badly. However, sometimes luck intervenes to turn the tide for the fortunate ones. In our story, the protagonist personally experienced the fact that people can indeed narrowly escape danger, thanks to a stroke of luck that timely steers clear of peril. This took place in the Far East, at a time when all those interested in fishing gathered at the shores of Lake Baikal, the main waterway in the region. Early one morning, a resident from a village near the main waterway of the area decided to go fishing. As the man was already elderly, he carried only the bare minimum of equipment. The fisherman's wife was always very worried because her husband had a serious hearing problem from his youth. Spending a lot of time at sea while working on his fishing boat, he once encountered a fierce storm and fell into the water. Fortunately, he was rescued, but the time spent in the icy water took its toll on his auditory organs. Now, in his old age, the fisherman was compelled to use a hearing aid, adapting to this indispensable device. However, he often forgot to put it on after waking up. This morning, in his haste to go fishing, the fisherman forgot to leave his hearing aid at home. Initially, he felt quite frustrated about it but decided not to turn back, sensibly thinking that he wouldn't need it by the river. Soon, he was completely immersed in the process of fishing. It's worth mentioning that this morning's fishing was highly successful, as he continuously caught fish and placed them in a plastic bucket he had brought for that purpose. Without a doubt, at that moment, the fisherman was happy, and the discomfort from not having his hearing aid was temporarily set aside. Approaching noon, as the sun beat down directly, the fish catch significantly decreased, prompting the fisherman to consider heading home. He began packing up his fishing rod, and as he turned around to face the bucket filled with fish behind him, he was almost scared out of his senses. Before him stood a massive bear, eagerly enjoying the fish. The fisherman's haul had evidently caught the attention of the ferocious bear behind him, but he continued fishing, while the predator indulged in the catch. Out of fear, the man stood there motionless, perhaps saving his life, as the satiated bear saw no aggression from the man and continued unabashedly feasting on the fish. This silent drama continued for a few minutes, and then the cunning bear sauntered to the shore, lying down about two meters away from the fisherman. The man didn't know what to do or how to proceed, so he stood there, desperately trying to suppress the trembling in his knees. Apparently, the fish being consumed by the bear was enough to evoke its lazy and friendly side. At some point, the fisherman summoned the courage to take a small step, then another, slowly moving away from the dangerous situation. The man distanced himself quite far from the bear, realizing he couldn't retrieve his fishing rod now, and he sadly headed home. When he told his wife about the fishing incident, she comforted him, telling him not to worry about the lost gear and catch because on that day, he caught a huge stroke of luck that allowed him to survive an encounter with such a fierce predator. It's hard to say, but if it weren't for the fish in his bucket, there might be nothing to calm the deaf fisherman's nerves and appease the bear attempting to snatch his catch. If the man had noticed the bear earlier, he would have surely tried to escape, undoubtedly further enraging the hungry predator. Friends, if you enjoyed this amazing story, please like, leave your comments, and share this video with your friends. Goodbye. Let's continue. In nature, animals compete and only the strong and lucky ones survive. When animals are in danger, their parents will protect them. With the blessing of their parents, they can grow up safely. Whether it is animals or humans, their parents always pay the most. What would they do if their parents are not around or are in distress in times of crisis? There was a group of cute snowy owl hatchlings all disappeared overnight, so that mother snowy owl was in anxious search. The ultimate truth shocked everyone. There are many white-furred animals in cold areas at high latitudes and high altitudes, which help them to escape from attacks. 
There was a species of owl that lived in such areas and the white color of its body was very beautiful. There are more than 130 species of owls, and they are all called owls because their heads are similar to a cat. The most obvious thing about snowy owls and other owls is that their feathers are different in color. Other owls have black brown, brown, and gray brown feathers, while snowy owls are white and look very cute, like an elf. One day in winter, a man found a very beautiful animal while swimming in the river, which was a white owl. However, the owl was actually a snowy owl. The man kept approaching it, but it didn't fly away and was probably injured. The man quickly asked for help from the Forestry and Grass Bureau because the snowy owl is a key protected animal, so he wanted to rescue it in time. It probably had food poisoning, so it didn't get scared or fly away. They needed to examine this snowy owl in detail to know what happened. Under the care of the relevant animal protection agencies, that snowy owl soon recovered its health. Considering that wild animals should be returned to nature, they decided to release it. However, in order to check the health condition of the snowy owl, the staff installed a locator on it. In May, the snowy owl came back and started to marry and have babies, which every snowy owl must go through. The snowy owl's favorite food was lemmings, and it occasionally preys on rabbits, gulls and ducks. During his study of that snowy owl, American biologist Holt discovered that snowy owls need 500 grams of food per day to survive in the Arctic and that they are more likely to hunt lemmings. Snowy owl reproduction is highly dependent on the amount of food available, Holt said, adding that snowy owls only lay an egg about every two days, and that they may lay up to 12 eggs when food is in good supply. During egg incubation, male snowy owls are responsible for hunting and returning lemmings as food. The snowy owl that was released at the time was already married. The pair dug a hole on the slope to make a nest and hatched two babies, one named Mike and one named Bob. The mother snowy owl kept watch over them and sometimes stood on the hillside looking into the distance, as if waiting for the father snowy owl to return. As long as the father came back, they would have food. After a long time, the father did not come back, so the mother decided to venture out to hunt for food. It pecked the two snowy owl hatchlings and told them to wait at home. After the mother snowy owl left, the two snowy owl hatchlings were whimpering in the nest. Mike was stronger and Bob was weaker, and before long they were on their backs in the nest. Not long after the mother left, a ferret emerged from the other side of the hill and saw the two snowy owl hatchlings. After watching for a while, it did not see the great snowy owl, so it crept forward. Mike sensed the danger, so it rushed to lie down in the grass, not daring to make a sound. Bob did its best to follow Mike, although it was weak. They hid quietly in the grass and thus escaped the ferret's attack. The mother snowy owl came back and found them all gone, so it hovered in mid-air for a long time before finding them in the grass. Luckily, the two snowy owl hatchlings were smart enough to escape the attack and survive. It took a few days for the father to return and bring food. They were finally reunited. Despite their weakness, they were able to defend themselves, which was astonishing. Something like this also happened in the grasslands of Inner Mongolia. People who graze in the grasslands of Inner Mongolia are no stranger to wolves. They are small, about the size of a mastiff, weighing about 20 to 30 kilograms, and look very cunning. They are thin and run fast. A herder's house in Xinghe County, Inner Mongolia, was attacked by wolves. At that time, a mother cow and a calf were kept in a spacious cow pen. The calf had just been born for three days and was snuggled up to the cow. The cow was lying on the ground, looking lazy. A skinny wolf sneaked into the pen and walked around them, watching them all the time. As it walked, it looked as if it was looking for an opportunity. The wolf was excited to see the calf and tried to capture it. However, since the large cow was right next to it, it was afraid to go forward. After several attempts, it retreated. 
It is reasonable to say that cows love their children very much and once they perceive danger, they will go to protect them. However, the cow had been lying calmly on the ground, not moving. Did it mistake that for a dog? Since the wolf ran into the cattle pen alone and without a companion, it was most likely very hungry and wanted to take the risk to hunt for food, or perhaps there were several wolf cubs waiting for it in the den. The wolf did not dare to attack the calf rashly, but it was unwilling to leave, so it kept looking for opportunities in the cattle pen. At that time, the atmosphere was stagnant, and the wolf was unwilling to leave because there was no food, while the cow was still lying peacefully on the ground. The calf could not resist, and when the wolf tried again in front of it, it slowly stood up and called out. It stepped forward and tried to chase the wolf away. The calf was not afraid of the tiger or the wolf and it again took a step forward, while the wolf immediately stepped back. At the same time, the cow stood up and went to the calf to protect it. After that, the wolf did not dare to stay and turned around and fled. When their owner saw the scene from the surveillance, he immediately took a flashlight and saw the cow and the calf standing alertly. The calf was safe and was not hurt by the wolf. No matter what animals they were, they were certainly the cutest when they were little. Not only were they cute, but they also had the ability to learn and adapt quickly, which is simply astounding. Humans need to be taken care of after they are born, yet animals are very independent or they are easily outgrown. Humans generally learn to walk when they are one year old, but many herbivorous animals, such as goats and antelopes, learn to walk 30 minutes after birth. Animals on land have to learn to walk while animals in water have to learn to swim as soon as possible. Animals need to be equipped with many skills at birth, so we should not underestimate them. Only if they are smart enough to survive safely in nature. Let's continue. A man who found an injured owl while out and about took it to a local animal rescue clinic out of pity to save the poor owl. During treatment, the man developed a strong bond with the owl. However, unexpected things are yet to come, so don't underestimate the owl's behavior of repaying kindness. On this day, a man named Doug went out to exercise as usual, because his home was on the edge of the city, surrounded by dense forests, and the high-quality air quality made him like to go for a run in the mountains, but when he just arrived at the foot of the mountain, he found a wounded owl lying on the ground, motionless. Doug immediately went to check, and he found that the owl suffered severe head trauma and was in critical condition. In order to save the owl's life, Doug immediately called the nearby animal rescue clinic, explained the situation, and sent the owl there. Medical staff at an animal rescue clinic in Mississippi took in the owl and evaluated it for wounds. After checking the wound, the medical staff found that the owl's injury was far more serious than everyone thought. They speculate that the owl may have been in a bad car accident that injured its brain in the impact, and that it also had some infections that made it worse. They were shocked by the owl's tenacious life, but the serious injury also made everyone extremely nervous. The person in charge of the animal rescue clinic is a woman named Missy. Based on years of rescue experience, she understands that the owl must be treated immediately, otherwise it may lose its life. So she assigned the task of rescuing the owl to the most trusted and experienced doctor. However, although the owl is still alive, given the extent of its trauma, both Missy and Doug believe it will die, and there is no full confidence that the owl will survive. But that fear didn't stop medical staff from doing all they could to save the owl. They immediately performed an operation on the owl. During the operation, everyone injected 120% concentration, and they understood that a small mistake may affect the life of the owl. Cleaning up the body, suturing the wound, applying medicine, the medical staff successfully completed the operation with their superb skills and rich experience. The owl saved its life, which also relieved everyone's hanging hearts a little bit. Although the operation was successfully completed, the follow-up treatment work is even more difficult, 
because animals cannot express their pain like humans, and humans and animals have different languages, which also means that medical staff must have enough care and patience to observe it. Due to the seriousness of the owl's injuries, its recovery process was very slow. The injury made it lose a pound, which is about one-fifth of its total body weight, but with the careful care and treatment of the medical staff, the owl's body began to slowly recover, some good things are coming. Because Doug has been thinking about the owl, he will come to visit when he is free, and as the owl begins to recover physically, it seems to have a real connection with Doug, and it seems to know Doug very well. It's here to help it, and it's getting more and more open. Missy said, the owl's trust in Doug is evident in its behavior and body language. I have never seen any owl show such emotion to a human. It is really incredible. Missy and Doug all realized that the owl was gradually recovering, and they were very happy. Missy described the experience as unbelievable, saying, when the owl was brought in, everyone was stunned by its injuries, we didn't expect it to recover so well, she also said that the intimate interaction between the owl and Doug, which she has only seen on TV, I think everyone is very grateful that it can meet Doug. And the reason why Doug can have incomprehensible emotions with owls starts from his own experience, Doug has the nickname, the Raptor Whisperer. Because of his long-term work with large birds such as owls, scops owls, etc. Large birds of prey are often difficult to care for because of their often unfriendly behavior. Imagine if you try to help an animal and give it meticulous care, but it scratches you, bites you, and attacks you as return, presumably this is not acceptable to ordinary people. Taking care of these birds, then, requires a special kind of people, people who have the patience and tolerance to care for these tantrum-prone birds with kindness and selflessness. And Doug is that kind of person. Doug's abilities are so widely admired that he's made second in charge of the clinic, where he, along with Missy, helped Owl make a full recovery. Having seen Doug's affirming abilities at work, Missy said she has never seen someone as capable of interacting with birds of prey as Doug in her career. With Doug's help, the owl slowly recovered its ability to prey. At first, she could only eat food from Doug's hand, but over the next few weeks, he relearned how to hold food by himself. That's a big win for an owl who's raced against death. Knowing that it would take more work to fully heal the owl on his own, Doug began more detailed care. Another important milestone on the owl's road to recovery is when it is able to stand on its own again, and at this benchmark, it's clear that the owl is on track for a full recovery. Seeing the owl's condition stabilized, Doug decided to visit his family in Michigan. He handed over the care of the owl to Missy and promised to return as soon as possible. But what everyone didn't expect was that since Doug left, the owl's spirit had declined, and its recovery speed was much slower, its mood became very irritable, and it even became hostile to the medical staff in the clinic. Discovering the change in the owl's temperament, Missy realizes that it has something to do with Doug's departure, and it's clear that she misses her good friend Doug very much. After learning of this situation, Doug immediately returned to the clinic. When the owl saw Doug, everyone was shocked and moved by its reaction. It turned out that when Doug took the owl out of the cage, the owl jumped up and down on his arm, as if dancing a cheerful dance. What happened next brought tears to everyone's eyes. It walked towards Doug's chest, gently leaned its head against it, and spread its wings to hug him, as if expressing its missing for Doug. After a few months, the owl had fully recovered, which meant it was time to return him to the wild. So, with reluctance, Doug and the medical staff took it back to the place where it was found, ready to say goodbye. But to their surprise, when the owl came out of the cage, it didn't immediately fly away like the other owls. Instead, it circled above them and looked back at them from time to time. At that point, everyone realizes that Owl doesn't want to leave, and that its hesitation to leave proves to Doug that he and Owl have developed a real connection, something that will always be with him. A well-known foreign veterinary writer once said, if having a soul means being able to perceive love, loyalty, 
and gratitude, then animals are better than many people. All things have spirits, even raptors like owls have a heart of gratitude. As advanced animals, we should learn to be grateful and know how to be kind.